His iPhone 13 Pro Max fell while a teen was playing soccer with his friends. Now it shows a cellular network issue, has no signal, and resets every three minutes. Apple tried a software update, but then said it was not repairable and wanted $599 for a replacement. When we dial star pound zero six pound, a menu should pop up showing the phone's IMEI, just like this. But nothing appears. That confirms the phone isn't connecting to the network. Next, we connect it to Wi-Fi, run a YouTube timer, and after just a few minutes, the phone resets by itself. We connect the iPhone to the computer and open crash analysis. Wow, the phone has crashed over 215 times. We click on details, copy the crash code, and analyze it online. The result points to the interposer, the union between the upper and lower boards. That explains why we're seeing two problems. The upper board handles the CPU, data, and charging. The lower board controls signal, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. When the connection between them fails, you get no signal, constant resets. We start by taking the phone apart, first removing the screen, then disconnecting the battery and the rest of the components. While removing the battery, we notice the liquid damage indicator is red. That means the phone has been exposed to water. It doesn't guarantee that water caused this issue, but it's definitely something we need to keep in mind. We take the motherboard out and remove all the stickers using heat and alcohol. This is done to prevent the stickers from melting later on when we separate the board. Next, we remove the 5G antenna. We apply flux on the connection, add a bit of solder, and gently heat it with the soldering iron while wiggling the antenna loose. Once it's free, we clean the pads with solder wick to prepare for the board separation. With the antenna removed, we place the motherboard on the preheater, set to about 210 degrees Celsius. We add a little solder paste on top of the board. This helps us know when the preheater has reached the right temperature to safely separate the layers. If we overheat the board, the phone can be permanently damaged. Once it's ready, we carefully separate it into two layers. Now that the boards are separated, we start by cleaning the upper layer. We apply flux, then use low temperature solder to tin the pads. After that, we clean everything with solder wick to make the traces flat and smooth. Once the pads are even, we remove any leftover flux with alcohol and a brush. We repeat the exact same process on the lower board. Flux, low temp solder, solder wick, and a final clean with alcohol. This makes sure both boards are perfectly prepared for rejoining. Before soldering the boards back together, we use a special tool called the eye socket jig. This allows us to connect the two boards temporarily, without soldering, just to test if the repair is heading in the right direction. We connect the charging port, the screen, and the battery, and finally plug in the charger to power on the device. The bad news is that we still see the cellular network error on the screen. We check the IMEI and nothing. There's still a signal issue. But the good news is the phone is no longer resetting. One problem solved, one more to go. Since the phone still shows the cellular network error and no IMEI, our next step is a software restore. Why? Because when the customer took the phone to Apple, they restored it while the phone had no signal. In cases like that, the software can block the baseband, and the baseband is the chip on the lower board that controls all cellular communication, calls, data, and network connection. It's basically the phone's radio station, handling how it connects to your carrier's network like AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile. We restore the phone, and during the process, it sends baseband data. 
If there was a baseband error, we'd know the problem was deeper. But this time, there's no error, which means the baseband is healthy, and the real issue is just the connection between the upper and lower board. The phone has now finished restoring, and the first thing we do is open the dial window and enter star pound zero six pound. This time, the IMEI appears. And just like that, we also see the A, T, and T signal in the top left corner. Success. Now that we've confirmed the phone is working in the jig, it's time to make the repair permanent by soldering the two boards back together. We place the lower board into a stencil. We apply solder paste, filling the holes evenly. Once that's done, we clean the residue with a blade, then place the cover on the stencil and heat it until new solder balls form on every pad. Now that we're done, we remove the cover from the stencil and do a final reflow with the heat gun to make sure all the solder balls are completely rounded and ready for a solid connection. Next, to join the two layers, we place the lower board on the preheater and add flux to the solder balls. Then we carefully place the upper layer on top and align it with the lower layer. We also apply a little solder paste on the board. This lets us know once the board has reached the correct temperature, preventing us from overheating the motherboard. The preheater warms the board evenly, and we add a little extra heat with the heat gun to help the solder balls melt and bond both layers together. Once finished, the two boards are securely joined as one. Once the boards are bonded, we let the motherboard cool down before moving to the next step. Now we reattach the 5G antenna. We apply a bit of solder on the connector pads, align the antenna with tweezers, and use the soldering iron to secure it in place. After that, we use a multimeter in diode mode to test each pad and make sure the readings are correct. This confirms there are no shorts, and the antenna is properly connected. With the antenna reattached and everything checking out, it's time for final assembly. We reinstall the stickers, cameras, battery, and screen, then close up the phone. We check the signal, and the phone now shows A, T, and T service. Next, we plug it into the charger and set a timer. The phone runs without resetting anymore. This confirms the repair is a complete success. And this future Messi's iPhone is ready for the next World Cup.